Hello, everybody. Today is April the 19th, and um, yeah, we're almost finishing this semester. Can't believe it. So let me make sure, yeah, the recording's in process. Uh, let's take a quick look at the schedule of the course. So we are on, today is April 19th, we are here. Today I should be talking about trucks and some hauling equipment, but I also need to cover drag lines, uh, clamshells, clamshells, and gradles, okay? I already have talked about backhoes. So once I do these two things, uh, on Wednesday, uh, we can practice exam two problems by solving the homework, and homework seven is also due on that day. And I know the exam is scheduled for Friday, but I can move it to the Monday after that, okay? So you all will get some more time to work on the exam during the weekend, okay? And this will also allow me to get one more class to work on the homework. So I might be able to solve homework seven here, okay? So, to put it short, let's move the exam to April 26, coming Monday. And plus, I will work on the problems on, oh, I'm not sharing the screen. Let me go ahead and share the screen very quick. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I was saying that today I will talk about drag lines, clamshell, and gradles plus trucks. Uh, it's actually a quick lecture, so today I will do this. On Wednesday, I will uh, work on some exam problems or homework problems. Also on Friday, I will continue solving problems. And on coming Monday, which is April 26, we could have the exam too that technically it finishes the course, okay? Do you guys have any questions at this point? No? All right. So if there are no questions, we can get started with today's lecture. So uh, today I will talk about, first I will talk about drag lines, clamshells, and gradles. Let's see what they are. All righty. So drag lines, clamshells, and gradles. First of all, when we are talking about a clamshell versus a drag line. Uh, both of them, they are crane mounted, crane mounted buckets, okay? In fact, we are talking about different types of buckets. Uh, so when you drag the bucket to fill it, it's called a drag line. That's why we call it drag line. And when you just send it down to do some excavation using its weight as a penetration force, it's called a clamshell, okay? So to get started, let's take a uh, look at a quick video showing a drag line and a clamshell. Oh, wrong video. So just give me... Um, one second, drag line. Yeah, that's a good one. So this is a small drag line, they could be giants. And this, as you can see, well, this is a small one, that's why it could move a lot more quickly, but drag lines are super slow machines when it comes to traveling. Uh, it takes an hour for a drag line to go only one mile, or their speed is only a mile an hour. So, as you can see, they have a long boom, and that enables them to do work where other equipment cannot enter. In fact, you can just send the bucket to, um, you know, to spots that are far from where the machine sits. So that's what a drag line does. And let's see, 
Quantum Show. This link is working. Yeah, this is a clamshell. As you can see, they can send it. They can send it to, uh, you know, spots a lot lower than where the machine sits. And obviously, they are only good to work with very soft materials. Okay, uh, they cannot. They don't have a lot of power for excavation. They can just grab things and then haul them and uh, yeah, they haul the materials into a truck, okay? So we call this a clamshell, not a drag line. Drag line is the one that you would drag on the surface to fill the bucket. And once again, drag line are, and clamshell, clamshell are actually two different types of buckets, both of which are mounted on a crane, okay? So let's get uh, more into the details. So drag buckets and clamshells are both attachments that are hung from a lattic, lattice boom crane. So they are both hung on a boom crane. And when we are talking about a clamshell or a drag line, we are talking about different types of buckets. So uh, a drag line works by Dragging a bucket toward the machine. Yes, the way you drag uh, this bucket is that you situate it far from the machine, you place it far from the machine, and then you drag it towards the machine. So at it as it becomes closer to the machine, the bucket gets filled. Um, the clamshell is different. The clamshell usually is sent, not usually actually, it's always sent perpendicular uh, to the ground and yeah so the, the the weight of the bucket which is usually pretty heavy is the only penetration force it can uh, exert on the surface and once again that's why clamshells are not good for excavation in excavating hard materials they're only good for very soft materials okay um, yeah, the operator has no positive control of the bucket. Uh, they can just, uh, yeah, they can, you cannot apply force to the bucket. You can just move the bucket, okay? But still, they are very, very useful machines because what makes them unique is that you can do work where no other equipment can enter. So, uh, yeah, so let's focus more on the drag line. Drag lines are used to excavate material and load them into the hauling units, as we said. So drag both machines, both drag lines and clamshells are primarily used to do work at spots lower than where the machine seats, okay, sits. So it's actually, they're good for um, yeah, underground, not, let's not say underground, but areas that are lower than the machine, okay, not higher than it. So, yeah, they can handle only soft materials or medium hardness. Uh, the advantage is the long reach, uh, so the, the long boom enables them to do work uh, at areas that are highly reachable okay uh yeah it's not it doesn't have the positive digging of a hydraulic shovel so the hydraulic shovel you have the hydraulic cylinders and they could exert a lot of force to the ground that's why um you can't think of drag lines if you're working with hard materials one uh, weakness is that the bucket can bounce tip over or drift sidewise if it encounters hard material. So yeah, so it's a little risky and most of the time drag lines are used in water, not most of the time, but many times, right? So for example, for dredging or for uh, moving sand from uh, the water and you're not really seeing what is going on under the water necessarily, so if if they hit uh, hard materials, they could bounce or they could tip over, okay? 
Um, yes, so they could be crawler mounted, mounted, sorry, they could be crawler mounted or, uh, yes, or wheel or truck mounted, okay? So, and depending on that, their force, I mean, not, um, their speed could be different, their speed could be different, and their ability to move on different types of surfaces could vary. Obviously, when you're talking about crawler mounted, we can work on uh, rocks and, you know, um, on more unfriendly surfaces. But when you're talking about the wheels, we don't want to get a flat tire. So uh, we need to have uh, prepared access roads for the machine. Okay, so that's the difference. But like I said, uh, the crawler mounted, uh, especially those that are too big are super slow when they are traveling. Yes, the travel speed of a crawler machine is very slow, frequently less than, even less than one mile per hour. Uh, yeah, and it's necessary to use auxiliary hauling equipment. Obviously, um, they are the, I mean, to ship them, to bring them to the um, field, you cannot move them on the highway by themselves. You need to use auxiliary, you need to use a giant truck. <clears throat> and sometimes you need to detach some parts and then attach them on the field if they are too big. So uh, you can imagine that another disadvantage for drag lines is that they have a high cost of shipping, right? So, or mobilizing, let's say. Factors impacting drag line production. Can you think of some factors? So we have the drag line, the bucket that um, when it drags on the surface, it fills the bucket and could be used for uh, some for excavation in soft surfaces. So now the, the question is, what are the factors that could potentially impact the, the drag line production? So there are a couple of factors. Uh, of course, the first one is the condition of the materials, how soft they are or how hard they are. The depth of the cut is also another factor. So how much control uh, the operator has on that location when you're talking about the drag line, depending on where it is situated, uh, the power of the bucket when it drags on the surface could vary, right? So angle of swing is also another factor, like uh, are the angle created by the set of lines running from the center point of the drag line to the point of excavation, to the spot where excavation is taking place, okay? So this is the angle of swing. Could also be a factor, the size and type of the bucket obviously is important. The larger is the bucket, the more productive it will be. And uh, we could have, um, the, you know, there is, um, it, they are pretty versatile. So depending on the surface condition, depending on the type of the operation you could use you could dismantle uh, a bucket and attach another bucket and it's not as it's not that easy it could take some time to replace the bucket of a drag line um, at least those that i have seen so uh length of the boom is also important obviously the longer is the boom it gives you accessibility to spots that are far from the machine the method of disposal, casting, and loading. Um, for example, are you loading with um, truck? I mean, are you loading a truck, uh, or are you just dumping it uh, somewhere? And then a dozer should move it somewhere else. Then they could be hauled. Um, so that could change the speed of the work or the productivity of the machine. Size of the hauling unit is also important. For example, if you are if you are loading a truck, the bucket cannot be. Um, I mean, the the bucket capacity should match the capacity of the truck. Okay. Um, 
skill of the operator is also very important. Um, yeah, these machines, I mean, always skill of the operator is important in the equipment productivity. This, this, these are one of the machines that could be difficult to manage because you don't have a lot of force to apply. You should just, um, you get the better productivity by putting the bucket in a location or in spot that it could do the job better, okay? And you cannot move the machine a lot. The machine is pretty much uh, fixed on the spot. It, it, I mean, you are, the machine is situated and then just the boom swings and does the job for us. So what else? Physical condition of the machine, how new or old it is, how, uh, what is the quality of maintenance could also go a long way and also the job conditions, okay? Uh, in what condition the work is getting done. So um, for example, the, um, the way the operator can see things could be a big factor, right? In case of a, um, in case of a clamshell, for example, as you saw in the video, the operator might not necessarily see what is going on because they are above the ground and there could be something like a valley and then they send down the clamshell like this and the operator loses sight on where the bucket is going, okay? So sometimes another person uh, could be um, looking at it from a safe spot and they could communicate um, or uh, the, the, the operator can just use their best judgment. Okay, so the job condition could be impactful, could be effective on how much work you can get done in an hour or in a day. So let's take a look. This is the area that uh, a drag line can excavate. Uh, starts from, as you can see, it's only under, um, it's, it's in the level below where the machine sits, okay? So it can have a trapezoid uh, shape, the area of excavation. Uh, and as you can see, all that the operator is doing is playing with these two lines plus the boom, right? By putting the boom in different locations and decreasing or increasing the length of this one and this one, okay, cables. Uh, then you can send the buckets to different spots, okay? So as you can see, it, the, the operator drags it. It means they uh, first put the boom on the right spot, send the bucket uh, to the right location, then play with this cable, okay? Then this cable starts to be like this. This cable starts uh, to, to drag the bucket towards the machine. And as the bucket gets closer to the machine, uh, it gets filled. It has the best digging power. It, ha it has the best digging power um, in this angle, 35% more power to lift, okay? So you cannot use it in angles more than 90 degrees because um, it will be very difficult for the bucket and it, the bucket could actually overturn. So it won't be effective. Starting from 90 degrees, it can start uh, digging. And in this degree, close to 90 degrees, it has the best um, digging. Then it's still good, but not best. And as you get close to the machine, it's really poor digging. It, I mean, maybe 10% or 5% of the bucket is filled here. Most of the bucket is filled in these two areas, the best digging area and the good digging area. So this is what picture, what this picture is trying to show. So we also have something similar, which is called a clamshell. If you remember the only difference, I mean, the machine is actually the same, but you dismantle the drag line and put this bucket um, this bucket is called a clamshell. And of course, some 
settings of the machine could be different, okay? Uh, so this is the hold line, this is the cl uh, close line. The way it works is that the operator sends down the bucket because of the weight of the bucket, which is most of the time pretty heavy. Um, it exerts some force to the ground and that is not a significant force because there are no hydraulic cylinders, but it can work with soft materials pretty well. And then you fill the bucket like this and then swing the boom and unload the bucket wherever you want, okay? So um, let me do one thing actually. I have the other, okay. In this one, I might have some videos. Yeah, this is the base frame. Yeah, nowadays drag lines are more powerful than before. And they can work with some semi hard types of soils. Okay. So in giant drag lines, this is what you see inside of the machine. Isn't it interesting? Yeah. So we also talked about, yeah, we were talking about the clamshell. All right, let me see. Here you go. So at the start, the bucket rests on the material. This is resting the bucket. And then it does the digging with the shells open. So that's why we call it a clamshell. So now the shells are open and then, but we're not seeing it, the two shells are drowned together and they do the digging. So the bucket becomes filled and then the operator moves it up. They can also move the boom and swing it and they will move it to the dumping spot. The weight of the bucket is the only force that is creating penetration. So, Working with these machines takes a lot of patience because most of the time you're talking about uh, big excavations and each time you're only doing a small part of it, okay? Because it should be big enough for the machine to be cost effective. Yeah. So this is a clamshell, as you can see, it's a nice, picture of a clamshell. Uh, we could have an excavator with hydraulic clamshell also, like this one. Obviously this is for smaller jobs, but it is it has uh, a much, you know, comparatively, uh, it has a um, uh, higher penetration voice force, sorry. It has a high penetration force. That's why it could be used 
for excavation in harder materials. So this is also a clamshell. So vertically, so it's vertically operated. Clamshell is vertically operated. It has two opposing scoops that are hinged together. This is the hinge. And then they could move sand, gravel, crushed stone, coal, and shells. Okay. They're also used to remove materials from vertical excavations, for example, coffer dams, uh, pier foundations, sewer manholes. Uh, you can use these machines to just remove the materials, okay? Or sometimes, uh, yeah, for dredging. So clam buckets are usually hung from a lattic boom crawler crane, like we previously said. So they move vertically. All right, so enough about drag lines and clamshells. I guess you guys got the idea that we are talking about the bucket and the machine is pretty much the same. I mean, both are mounted on um, uh, a crane. And then what makes them unique is uh, the ability of doing work in the distances that are not uh, achievable by other types of equipment, okay? And the skill of the operator goes a long way in how they work, but they cannot work with hard materials. They are good for soft materials primarily. Now let's move on to uh, this machine. It's called a Gradle. So it's pretty, yeah, it's comparatively smaller than other types of equipment. Let's see what they are good for. So here's a cradle. As you can see, most of them are mounted on a, uh, on a big truck. That's why you could bring them to the side uh, fairly quickly. They are cost effective. Uh, when you have small excavations and you don't want to pay for giants, you could use them. And obviously they have more freedom of motion because of their small size. Mm, nice. So you, you, you just saw different operations of Gradle. So let's see. So it combines the operations of a hoe, of a drag line, and a motor grader. And as you can see, the boom could actually be pretty long. So it's pretty much doing the operations of a drag line, but it has hydraulic cylinders, so it could insert a lot higher force. They're interesting machines. They could move on, they could be driven on highways. Obviously, uh, this one should be, should use auxiliary hauling machines at the speed of 55 miles per hour. They could be crawler mounted, mounted, or they could be on wheels. They're pretty versatile. There are different types of them, as you saw, in the previous video, the video we saw before this, what there was a small one. This one is pretty big. They could work in more restricted areas, smaller machines, smaller gradles can work in. Did you see the 30, 360 degree rotation? So brought it here and then just continue the rotation. Not all of them are like this, but this particular one can go 
360 degrees. So they do have the positive hydraulic control, which makes them, which enables them to work with, uh, you know, work with uh, harder materials. So uh, in this PowerPoint, I have put three slides for some more weird machines like future heavy equipment that do not necessarily exist now or some breathtaking skills of the operator. When you have time, just take a look at them at home. They're not part of the course uh, for exams or quizzes or homework. All right, so let me see. I have uh, some more minutes to talk about trucks. So uh, for trucks and hauling equipment is right here. Any questions so far about drag lines and clamshells? Did not hear anything from you guys. I want to make sure that there are no questions. Okay. So let's move on to trucks, which are, you know, we are pretty familiar with trucks. We have seen them. Uh, have always seen trucks in different sizes, so they're easier to understand. All righty, so trucks um, are pretty productive machines because they can move the earth at high speeds and they come in different sizes. Uh, this, the capacity of them could be uh, pretty high or they could be actually smaller ones. Uh, they come in versatile, versatile sizes. For example, this one is 320 tons. It's the size of a T-Rex. <laughs> yeah, this one is 240 tons. So 560 tons. Um, most of the time, the main question when you are dealing, when you are working or you need trucks is the number of trucks that you need, okay? So trucks are the less costly machines. That's why you should match the number of trucks with, uh, with more costly machines. Why? Because we don't want the expensive machine to wait for a truck. The truck should be always one truck, at least should be always ready to be hauled by the expensive machine. So uh, you should find the, but you also don't want a lot of trucks that are just waiting for the excavator or for the loader. That's why the big question in a construction project is the number of trucks you are going to need in such a way that all of them are being used effectively. No, none of them is just uh, sits, sitting idle. So uh, this, the load of the truck, I mean, the size of the truck um, and could impact the load it can carry. But when, if you need to move the truck on a highway, you are not free, okay? I mean, you don't, your, your hands are a lot more tighter than the time you're moving it on the job site. Because according to the rules, a lot of highways have a limit, a load limit for the truck that you cannot exceed. And you can guess the reason. That's obviously to take care of the federal highways, okay? because if they are super heavy, then uh, the, the highway will be damaged earlier. All right, so capacity of a truck is highly dependent on uh, if you are doing uh, the hipped capacity or if you are doing this truck capacity. So hipped volume, struck volume could be different. This is hipped, so uh, we have some tables that show us the difference between uh, the volume when it is struck versus hipped. So once again, hipped is, for example, for this type of machine, this is 79 cubic yards, uh, is the empty weight. But when it, when it is, uh, the gross weight is 60, but for the struck, it could be 55 versus 42. So we can see that 
it could significantly impact the weight of the truck, okay? All right, why not to overload a truck? That's a big question, right? Because now that you can uh, do hip, why don't why not overload it? And it's not all. It's not just about uh, you know hip capacity. You could move. You could put super heavy rocks on a truck. Okay. And um, why it's not a good idea? Why you should always consider the load capacity of a truck? Here's the answer. Number one is that it's because uh, overloading the truck will uh, make the tires to flex excessively, okay? And it will be high internal pressure. So that high internal pressure will cause them to wear uh, a lot more quickly, okay? And that increases your operating costs. So you are, you are actually loading it more intensively because you want to lower the price, but technically and, you know, in fact, you are increasing the operating cost because your tires will wear out a lot more quickly and you need to replace them earlier. So sometimes we can add sideboards to the trucks to increase the capacity, especially if you're working with lighter materials. So you're working with lighter but bulky materials. So you could, uh, based on the loading capacity, you could have more of that material on a truck. So you could add some sideboards to the truck to make longer boards or longer walls around the truck and to increase the capacity or let's say to increase the depth of the loading loading location or loading spot so uh, some factories some truck uh, factories will provide those sideboards and sometimes truck yes truck manufacturers engineer sideboards um, could actually uh, they will provide it for you or they will provide the specifications that if you want to put the sideboards, for example, they cannot go higher or higher than a certain uh, amount. So you should all also be careful about the weight of the truck all, all the time uh, because if your truck becomes too heavy, then it will consume higher fuel, the the life of the tire will be reduced and they will be frequent failure of, the, of different parts like axles, springs, brakes, and transmission. Yeah, for example, brakes is also a very costly part of the trucks because especially when you're working in downhill slopes, uh, so most of the time you need a retarder, so you don't have to use the brakes all the time. Remember retarders? Retarders is a device that is installed on the machine and it keeps its, its speed below a certain level, okay, without using the brakes. Um, especially, this is especially good when you're moving down, uh, downhill, okay. Okay, so if the value of the extra material hauled is greater than the total increase in the cost of the operating machine, then the overload is justified. Yeah, so all the time you should think that if you overload, because overloading is most of the time an option. You could most of the time overload a truck, but the question to answer is that, is overloading worth? I mean, does it worth it? So you should look at the costs, the additional costs it could create and the saving it could create by lowering the duration of the, of the uh, operation, okay? So, Tires are about 35% of a truck's operating cost. This is good information to keep in mind. That's why we should take care of the tires a lot, okay? And over, overloading a truck abuses tires. So uh, different types of trucks could have advantages and disadvantages, uh, small trucks versus large trucks. Uh, most of them are pretty obvious for example uh the, the larger they are you will need less you need fewer number of trucks when you're using larger trucks but there could be more waiting time right 
because if you use larger trucks and fewer number of trucks, then there could be less flexibility in hauling them because imagine you have two trucks and imagine you have five trucks. So in, whenever you have, when you are, if you have five trucks, most of the time there is one truck ready to be loaded, okay? So there will be more flexibility. There will be less idle time. Let me see what much time we have. Okay, I can finish this really quickly. So it says a loader operating at, we want to match a loader and the truck, okay? So the loader is 107 cubic yard per hour. It, this is the operation of it. This is the heaped capacity of its bucket. And it takes 1.2 minutes to uh, in every cycle. Okay, it is working. So the loader is loading a truck. Now the truck has 11 cubic yard capacity, and it takes 30 minutes to dump plus haul plus return. Okay, and we want to use 95% fill factor for the loader. It means the bucket could 95% of the bucket could be filled. This depends on the type of the materials, if you remember. The project also works um, or uses a 50 minutes in an hour efficiency. What is the economic, economic, sorry, balanced number or balanced number of trucks in this project? So we have, we know the type of the loader, the size of the bucket, the fill factor, and the capacity of the truck and the cycle time of the two machines and the efficient minutes in an hour. We want to know how many trucks we should bring to the site so that all of them will be working efficiently. First of all, you should match uh, the, the size, I mean, the capacity of the bucket and the capacity of the um, truck to be loaded. So if you divide 11 by two and a half, so 11 was for the truck, two and a half was the bucket capacity of the loader, you get 4.4. Here's the trick, you should round down and load the truck with four buckets, okay? So you don't really have to fill the bucket for 95% because uh, you're rounding down. Instead of 4.4, .4, uh, you could do four buckets, okay? So loader cycle time, so we're talking about the loader. It takes one minute, 1.2 minutes and it can do four buckets, okay? It can do four buckets. Uh, that's why it takes 4.8 uh, minutes for the loader cycle time. For the truck cycle time, uh, it's a summation of load, haul, dump, return. All of them was given to us as 30 minutes. And the truck also takes 4.8 uh, minutes to get loaded. So each cycle completely from the, including the loading time will take 34, almost 35 minutes, okay? So the truck payload is, this is the size of the bucket and this is the number of times we loaded and we are loading it with 95% capacity of the bucket. So this is the amount that is loaded on truck before it it moves, it, it leaves the job site to dump the load. So nine and a half cubic yard. And remember the capacity was 11 cubic yard. So how much work it can produce? So nine and a half is the capacity is actually the what we put on the truck and it takes the truck almost 35 minutes to do to process this much this much earth, okay? But we are not working every minute of an hour. We are only working effectively 50 minutes of an hour. So this truck can process or can haul almost 14 cubic yard of dirt in every hour, okay? So how to find the balanced number of trucks? Uh, you, all that you need to do is to divide the cycle time of the truck by the cycle time of the yeah yeah the the loading the loading part okay so it's 7.25 so you round it to seven trucks 
you will need seven trucks to get this job done most effectively. And uh, for example, if you use six trucks, this is just to test it. If you use six trucks, 13.7, okay, multiplied by six is because that, that was the tr truck production in hour, okay? One truck can do 13.7. So six trucks can do this much work in an hour. If you use seven, uh, seven trucks can do this much work per an hour, okay? And eight trucks can do more than that. And nine trucks can do a lot more, more than that, okay? So uh, that's just to show how the number of trucks impacts the, you know, your productivity. All right, that completes the truck lecture. Now there's one slide about safety. You can, it's, it's, it's there's only four lines, please study this at home. Uh, so I could have the Kahoot before we leave. So we can leave on time. Um, yeah, be prepared for the Kahoot. The problem is straightforward. Uh, by reading it, you can understand all the details about it. If not, I will be available for questions, okay? So once again, on uh, the coming to Wednesday and the coming Friday are important classes because we will be solving homework questions. It's a matter, it's a, it's a, both classes will be computational classes. And then we are done with computations, so we will, uh, we will have the exam next Monday. I'm still waiting for seven more students. All right. Sounds good. Let's get started. Which sentence is correct about the picture below? Which one is a clamshell? Which one is a drag line? Oh, one was clump. Was it, did they give the right? I think that's name? backwards. Yeah, that's backwards. Yeah, I should select this one. One is drag line, two is clamshell. So, ah, uh, I should fix this. Yeah, I selected the wrong choice. So this was the answer. One was the drag line and two is the clamshell. Don't worry, I will give the score to everyone for this question. Which sentence is false about drag lines? Yeah, drag lines cannot work effic efficiently with hard materials or above ground level. So that makes that statement false. Next. Yeah, that was an excavator with a uh, hydraulic clamshell. And the last question, oh no, the question before the last, which statement is false about gradles?
Yeah, they don't move more slowly than drag line. They're actually a lot faster than drag line. So this is the last question. Which one is false about, about trucks? Yeah, they're not low productive productivity, they are high productivity. So that completes our class to exactly nine o'clock. Um, please do the homework and submit it on time for the next class. Dylan, good job. All right, I'll see you all next time. Take care. Any questions from those who are in the room? All right, I'll see you all next time.